good morning all welcome to the first class of physiology today would we would be taking physiology of digestion a hurried breakfast when you are getting late for your work or for your college a dinner celebrating a dinner on your achievement or going on a diet to reduce that two extra kgs that you have put up what do these experiences have in common food we may not be taking it seriously or i can say that we take food for granted we celebrate with it we wish we would could not have eaten those extra calories although food is not as immediate a need for human beings as is oxygen it is still very important part of our lives food provides the raw materials or nutrients that the cells use to produce and build new tissues the energy that is needed for cell reproduction and for tissue building is released from the food in the process of cell respiration in fact a number of nutrients from regular food intake is so important that the body can even store any excess of them for the later use those extra 2 or 1 kg that we put on are often stored fat in the adipose tissue the food we eat however is not in the form that our body cells can use the function of the digestive system is to change those complex organic nutrient molecules into simple organic and inorganic molecules that can be absorbed into the blood or the lymph to be transported to the cells today in this chapter we would be dealing with the process of digestion so what is digestion digestion is a process by which the complex food substances are altered physically and chemically so that they are reduced to simple assimilable forms it is divided into two parts mechanical digestion and chemical digestion now what is mechanical digestion it is the liquefying of food by digestive juices mastication the mastication the process of mastication that is the chewing of the food when we chew the food with the teeth when it is in the mouth this as breaks the food into smaller particles as the food is broken down more surface area is exposed to the digestive enzymes the third mechanical digestion process is swallowing or deglutition जिसे हम कहते हैं खाने को निगलना एंड द फोर्थ इज द पेरिस्टाइलिस विच इज द फॉरवर्ड मूवमेंट ऑफ द फूड इन द डाइजेस्टिव ट्रैक्ट पेरिस्टाइलिस इज द वेव ऑफ मस्क्यूलर कॉन्ट्रैक्शन एंड रिलैक्सेशन विच कॉजेज द फूड कंटेंट्स ऑफ गैस्ट्रो इंटेस्टाइनल ट्रैक्ट टू मूव फॉरवर्ड एज यू कैन सी इन दिस पिक्चर दिस इज द एलिमेंट्री कैनाल where the food which is the in the form of bolus is passing forward in the alimentary canal the circular muscles that are immediately behind the bolus or the food in the digestive tube contract and those which are in front of it relax and the food is pushed in the relaxed portion at each stage you can see the food is being pushed forward in the gastrointestinal tract now what is chemical digestion the second part of the digestion enzymes that are present in the digestive juices with which the food comes in contact at different levels of alimentary canal brings about the chemical digestion the enzymes 
catalyze the hydrolysis of proteins into amino acids, starch into monosaccharides and fats into glycerol and fatty acids. The digestive juices secreted by the various parts of the alimentary canal are saliva is secreted in the mouth, gastric juice is secreted by the stomach and in the duodenum we have three types of juices the bile juice which is secreted from the liver the pancreatic juice which is secreted from the pancreas and the sucus entricus or the intestinal juice which is secreted from the duodenum this is the figure that is showing the complete process of digestion the digestion begins in the mouth and is carried out till the anus as soon as the food enters into the mouth, the process of digestion starts. The food which is taken into the mouth is masticated by the teeth. This part of the digestion is the mechanical digestion. The food is moved around in the mouth by the tongue. The moistened, it is moistened by the saliva and it is formed into a soft mass known as bolus. So all this part of the digestion in the mouth is the mechanical digestion. The chewing of the food, the movement of the food in the mouth, the moistening of the food by the saliva and its formation into a small bolus. Saliva. Saliva is the juice that is secreted, the digestive juice that is secreted in the mouth. The secretion of saliva is under two phases, the conditioned reflex and the unconditioned reflex. Now what is conditioned reflex? Conditioned reflex is the secretion by which even the sight, smell and thought of food brings about the secretion of saliva in the mouth. As we all know, there are certain things that we like, certain food. Imagine you are going to a college and your mother says, when you come back beta, I will be making samosas for you. Now in the college, when you think of this, that when you will be going home and your mother would be preparing samosas for you, the very thought of this brings about the secretion of saliva in the mouth and we call this process watering of the mouth. As we say in Hindi, muh mein pani ana. So, because we know the taste, because we enjoy that food, so the very sight, sometimes we are passing through the shop, we see the food and our mouth starts watering. We smell about the food and the mouth starts watering. So, this is the conditioned reflex when the secretion of saliva starts even by the sight, smell or even thought of the food. Then comes the unconditioned reflex. Unconditioned reflex is the secretion of saliva with the actual presence of food in the mouth. When the food enters the mouth, the secretion of saliva starts by the stimulation of the medulla oblongata which stimulates the salivary center. So, when the food actually comes into the mouth, the second phase of the secretion of saliva starts. Now the composition of saliva. 99% is it consists of water. It contains mucus which is glycoproteinous in nature. It contains enzymes. The enzymes are tylen, lysozyme and lingual lipase. It contains inorganic salts also. In a day, about 1000 to 500, 1500 ml of saliva is secreted. And the pH of saliva is, it is slightly acidic, it is 6.7. Now, what are the functions of saliva? Firstly, we should know that the food remains in the mouth for a very short duration. 
in the entire gastrointestinal tract which starts from the mouth and ends in the anus mouth is the only part where the food stays for the most minimum period of time so the first function even then the first function of saliva since it is a digestive juice the first function is digestion as we have seen it contains the enzyme ptyalin ptyalin is a starch splitting enzyme it splits the starch so starch splitting enzyme ptyalin which is also known as salivary amylase acts on cooked starch it does not act on uncooked starch it will only act on cooked starch so starch will act ptyalin will act on starch and it will convert it into maltose maltotriose and dextrins the activity of the enzyme ptyalin is strongly affected by the temperature and ph the optimum ph is 6.7 and the optimum temperature for the enzyme activity is 32 degree centigrade to 37 degree centigrade the 30% of digestion of starch takes place in the mouth itself the second important function of saliva is lubrication it lubricates the food that means the it moistens the food for swallowing the protection of mouth cavity it protects the buccal mucus membrane and it also dilutes the acid speech and cleaning mouth is kept moist by the saliva and when the mouth is moist it facilitates the speech we have always seen that when a person comes to give a speech often a glass of water or a water bottle is placed in front so that the person can moist its mouth in between because if the every time we speak and for the, the longer duration that we speak as the air enters the mouth the mouth becomes dry and the mouth when the mouth becomes dry the speech becomes unclear so the saliva keeps the mouth moist the buccal cavity moist and this facilitates the speech cleaning of buccal cavity is also done by the movement of the tongue the next important function of saliva is taste the taste buds are stimulated when food particles are dissolved in saliva dry food does not stimulate the taste buds and another important function is antibacterial action lysozyme that is present in saliva it dissolves the cell wall of bacteria and kills them a very simple example that we see in our daily life is when we get a cut on the finger we immediately bring it into the mouth because why because the lysozyme is there which has the antibacterial function so these were the important functions of saliva now as the food is masticated in the mouth as the ptyalin acts on it the enzyme the food is broken down into a soft mass as we saw early known as the bolus now from the mouth the bolus has to be pushed back into the elementary pushed forward into the elementary canal how is this done the first phase is the swallowing or as we call it deglutition swallowing or डीग्लटेशन जिसे हम खाने को निगलना भी कहते हैं दिस फॉलोइंग इज कंसिस्ट ऑफ थ्री फेजेस इन द फर्स्ट फेज द बोलस एज द फूड इज नाउ कॉल्ड इन द माउथ इट इज पुश्ड बैकवर्ड इन टू द फेयरिंग्स बाय अपवर्ड मूवमेंट ऑफ द 
tongue. In the second phase, the bolus is pushed into the esophagus from the pharynx. And in the third phase, the food is carried down from the esophagus by the involuntary peristalsis and it reaches the stomach. The stage 1 and stage 2 are deliberate and voluntary, but the stage 3 is involuntary. That is, when we swallow the food from mouth to the esophagus, this is a voluntary process. We may or we may not swallow the food. It, is a, it depends on our will. But once the food reaches the esophagus, then it is carried to the stomach by the peristalsis and we do not have any control on it. So, the food now which is known as the bolus, it reaches the stomach. Digestion in the stomach, we will study tomorrow. Today, we will take, we have taken digestion in the mouth.